Hi Sarah, this is Michael from OnlineTOEFLCourse.com and uh, you're doing some TOEFL private tutoring with me tomorrow morning and today you sent me four speaking practice tests so I can kind of get used to your overall speaking uh, and pronunciation abilities of American English, right? So right now I'm going to listen to the first one and I, I think based on the email that you sent me, uh, your goal is to get a score of 80 on the TOEFL IBT exam, correct? So I'm going to listen to the speaking right now, and I'm going to kind of figure out what your score is right now based on these four speaking tasks. For me, I think it's better to learn in traditional classrooms because the students are easily get distracted. And as for me as, for me as a teacher, when I explain some information, an important one, I notice that some of the students are get distracted. And then I try to ask them questions about the information I just explained because I want to attract their attention to let them focus on the lesson. That way I think it's more better to learn in traditional classrooms. For me. Okay, so I'm I'm guessing that the the actual question is what do you prefer? Uh, online classes or more traditional classes? And obviously you're choosing uh, traditional classes. Okay, so let me let me listen to this one more time. I'm gonna give you some comments. And I'm I'm and after I listen to these three speaking practice tests, I'll have a pretty good idea of what your ability is. Uh, my first impression for this one, let me get a pencil here. Give me a quick second. Okay, here it is. Yeah, I think here, I'm gonna put you maybe around 2.5. Or maybe 19 points out of 30 on this one. So let's listen to it one more time. I'm going to give you some suggestions. For me, I think it's better to learn in traditional classrooms because the students are easily get distracted. And Okay, so you prefer online classrooms because of the distractions. It's easier to get distracted. So you're saying that they'll be more distracted when they're doing online learning, right? So what if you said to avoid distractions and to promote better learning, I prefer traditional classrooms. So what you need there is maybe a more specific organization right in the beginning that makes it easier, Sarah, to frame your response. So then once you get done with the intro, you say, first of all, I think traditional classrooms are much better because there are fewer distractions. Then you give a specific example to support that. See, that's not what you did here. Listen. As for me as for me as a teacher. When you say there's there's more distractions, then say something like, for, for instance, then try to give an example to support that. When I explain some information, an important one, I not... No, what kind of information? You're speaking in very general terms. You see where it says here in the two, you mostly express basic ideas with limited details and support. So your vocabulary is very generic. Your details are very generic. And you can also improve the organization of your ideas. Just that some of the students are get distracted. And then I try. Now, if some students get distracted, can you give an example to illustrate that point? You're still talking in more general terms. I to ask them questions about the information I just explained because I want to attract their attention to let them focus on the lesson. That way, I think it's 
more better to learn. And you don't want to say more better, just say better. But trying to explain three reasons why traditional classrooms are better, it's not a good strategy because you're not able to give enough specific details to support those ideas. Traditional classrooms. For me, I Okay, so the, the step here is uh, in this email, Sarah, I'm going to put a link to a very, very important lesson for you. It's called TOEFL Independent Speaking Strategies. This lesson will give you some really, really good ideas on how you can frame these kinds of speaking responses so you have a more coherent organization and also one with more specific detail. Right now, also, you need some improvements with your delivery. Uh, you have some problems with uh, what I call choppy, fragmented, kind of frequent pauses and hesitations, and they're not quite as natural as you need to be. I'm listening to your integrated speaking task number two. So I think this is a reading, listening, speaking, campus related. The man think that the university, the computer department plan will not work because most of the students have things to do at night. They have jobs, families, and other social events. And other thing is that the money. It will cost a lot of money if they want to hire a lot of a professor, and that is much more money than they uh, will spend if they buy new computers. Okay. Because their computers cost is uh, run down last two uh, last years. So and the computer uh, classes are big enough. So the easy way to solve the problem is to get uh, to buy a new computers. And that way, uh, the man feel that the university, uh, the computer department plan will not work. Okay, so let's listen to this one one more time. Um, I'm going to put you at 2.0 uh, out of 5 on this one. Maybe approximately 15 points out of 30 on this practice test. So listen to it one more time. The man thinks that the university, the computer department... Now, the man thinks that, but before you get into that, you have to have some type of introduction. Is there a reading passage and then a listening passage? What if you said the, the reading passage discusses a new policy about computers on campus, and in the listening passage, the man reacts to the policy? So you have to have some kind of introduction that can frame... Uh, what's happening here. So we need to know that you're summarizing a reading and a listening passage. And that means you need to embed more voice markers into your department plan will not work because most of the students have things to do at night. They have jobs, families, and other social events. Okay. And other thing is that... How about, in addition, the man claims... Or the man also disagrees with the policy because, <coughs> so Sarah, you need to acknowledge the speaker. You need to use those voice markers maybe five or six times during your response. So I will put an independent and integrated speaking lesson into this email and you really want to go through the integrated lesson to look at the structure. I will give you... Uh, what I call organizational type structures for speaking tasks two, three, and four. So you can go through those and learn those. And that's something that we will practice uh, in our TOEFL private lessons. It'll take some time for you to figure this out, but we can figure this thing out together. The money. It will cost a lot of money if they want to hire a lot of a professor. And that is... When I say professors... The stress is on that second syllable. Much more money than they uh, will spend if they buy new computers because their computers cost is uh, run down last two uh, last years. So 
because the computers are run down, maybe compared to the ones they used last year. So you're also having some <coughs> language use difficulties uh, explaining this information. That means that you have vocabulary limitations. And that's also going to help bring that score down. So I think you can work on improving your vocabulary and your grammar. And uh, I will enroll you in my online TOEFL course, a seven step system to pass a TOEFL IBT. And that'll give you some practice. But I know that your TOEFL test is in two weeks from now. And it's not very likely you can solve all these problems in just a short period of time. It's going to take some time for you to build the vocabulary and the grammar so that you can more fully express your ideas. Oh, and the computer classes are big enough. So the easy way to solve the problem is to get... So the easy way to solve the problem according to the man... Is uh, ...to buy a new computer. You want to say to buy a new computer, just say to buy new computers. Once you make the plural noun there, you don't need to use a before that. Um, that way, uh, the man feel that the university, uh, the computer department plan will not work. The man thinks... Okay, so I'm, I'm comfortable right now. This is about 2.0, 15 points out of 30 on this one. I think delivery, you are having some problems with pronunciation, a lot of frequent pauses and hesitations. You have limited range and control your grammar and vocabulary, and that prevents you from fully expressing your ideas. And with uh, the topic development area, <coughs> I think you've omitted maybe some key ideas there, and you probably need to better structure your ideas. Hi, Sarah, this is Michael, and thank you for completing this speaking task number three. So you have a reading and a listening passage, and this is academic. All right, so let's listen to your integrated speaking task. Number the professor three. gives two examples about verbal and nonverbal communication. The first one, he feel happy when he saw his ankle and he, his eyes get wider and he, he has a good big smile on his face. So his verbal and nonverbal signals were similar so that more convincing that his ankle feel happy. And on the other hand, when he smashed his thumb with humor, with a humoral when he bought the birdhouse with her do with his daughter, he felt pain, but he don't want uh, to uh, his daughter to learn that no no that so he said that I'm okay, but his face contouring with pain and his voice so the his verbal and nonverbal signals were not similar. So that's why his daughter is keeping asking them if he is okay. Okay. So uh, my first impression is, I'm going to listen to it one more time. I'm going to put you at 2.0 out of 4 on this. This is going to put you at 15 points, maybe out of 30 on that third practice test. And let's listen to it one more time. I'll give you some comments. Let's listen to the introduction. The professor gives two examples uh, about verbal and nonverbal communication. The first one. Yeah, I'm having trouble hearing what you said there at about three seconds. But th the problem here, Sarah, is you have a reading and a listening passage. Well, what happened to the reading passage? I mean, usually with this kind of task, you'll say, let's say that you're, you're talking about nonverbal communication. The professor gives an example about that, and that helps illustrate something that was mentioned in the reading, right? So you would say the reading passage defines nonverbal communication, and the speaker in the lecture gives two examples to further illustrate the idea, right? So if you are using a reading and a listening passage, you want to make sure that you're framing your response so you talk about both of those ideas, not just the lecture. He felt happy when he saw his ankle and he... 
You want to say he feels happy when he sees his uncle or he felt happy when he saw his uncle. So in this response, you lost control, Sarah, of your verb tenses. You're shifting a lot from present to past, past to past. His eyes get wider and he, he has a good big smile on his face. Okay. So his verbal and nonverbal signals were similar. So, so notice you said his nonverbal uh, were similar, but the verbs right before that were actually present tense. So that more convincing that he's uncle. So that they more convincing, so that they were more convincing. You're not putting your subject and your verb in there uh, with that part of your... Feel happy. And on the other hand, when he smash his... Now, instead of saying and on the other hand, just say on the other hand. There's no need to say and and then on the other hand. You want to pause when you get done with that part of your response, and then you can move on. And using on the other hand, Sarah, is a good... It's a, it's a good word to use because it helps show a contrast. It shows a contrast between the information, uh, between the two examples that you're given. Thumble with humor, with humor when he bought the birdhouse with her do with his daughter. And even right in there, you had, you're leaving out, I think, some important words in there. You're not fully forming some of your sentences in there. So that's a, that's a bit of a problem. He felt pain. But he don't want uh, to... Uh, he felt pain, but he did not want to blah, blah, blah. Or he feels His pain. daughter to learn that. To no, know that. So he said that I'm okay. But his face contouring with pain. And his face was contorted with pain. You want to say? And his voice... So the, his verbal and nonverbal signals were not similar. So that's why his daughter is keeping. So that is why his daughter is. So be careful. Sometimes when you're forming your sentences, you're not putting subjects and verbs in. Asking them if he is okay. Okay, let me go back and look at the rubrics here. You, I might have to score you a bit lower than two here. Yeah, I'm going to put you slightly lower than two on this. I'm going to put you maybe, uh, I'm going to change this from 1.5. After I listened to it the second time, you had more problems. So 1.5, I'm going to give you 11 points out of 30 on this on this speaking task. So you're. it looks like you're better with the familiar topics. You're having more trouble with the integrated speaking topics. That's what it looks like to me. And let's now listen to integrated speaking task four, Sarah. Let's see how you did with- In order for art to appeal in motion, artists began to use different visual elements like colors and textures. They use strong colors to evoke a strong emotion of excitement or anger like red and oranges. And maybe they use cooler color like blue. For textures, it may be visual or physical. Physical in some kind of art and visual in painting. They can use some techniques to uh, display roughness or smoothness of the painting. And okay. roughness painting show more strong emotion than the smooth, the smooth one. And when the painting gather the two type of uh, red color or orange color that give the strong emotion and roughness texture that evoke a strong meaning than the a painting with a cooler color and a smoother texture. In order for art to Okay, so this is your integrated task number four. Yeah, this is tough. Let me look at the two range. You need better structure on this thing. I think every single speaking task, there's there's one thing, if you can improve in this area, is, is to connect ideas together a little bit better. That's going to really help you. Uh, this one, I'm going to put you maybe a 1.6. I'm just giving you estimated scores here, maybe 13 points uh, out of 30 on this. 
Okay, so let's listen to it one more time, and I'm going to comment on it as we go. Appeal emotion. Artists began to use different visual elements. Yeah, but who is this? Where is all this coming from? This is not your idea. You're explaining a lecture. So why not use some voice markers in there? How about saying the lecture explains several important points about blah, 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 or the lecture defines a certain concept and then gives two examples to further illustrate the idea. So you don't really have an introduction. And without the introduction, Sarah, it makes it more difficult to follow your ideas. We, we need to get purpose first. We need to have some general statements about the lecture and then you can break up those general statements into more specific information as you move through your response. Like colors and pictures. They use a strong color. Now, who is they? You mean artists, right? Colors to evoke a strong emotion of excitement or anger. You want to say emotion, excitement. Anger like red and oranges. And maybe they use cooler color like blue. For pictures, it's... And maybe say maybe these artists use... So you're relying on way too many pronouns in there. You can use pronouns, refer back to information already mentioned, but don't get too carried away with that. Um, Maybe visual or physical. Physical and some kind of art and visual in painting. They can use... You want to say visual in painting. Use some techniques to uh, display roughness or smoothness of the painting and uh, roughness painting show more strong emotion than now don't forget with that s so a lot of times you're not using that third person s ending for example the if you say the artists show right or the artist shows through the painting so depending on whether the subject is single or plural you either put the s or you don't the smoothest the smooth one and when the baiting gather the two. Now notice with not baiting, but your P's, your B's, your T and your D consonant sounds, you can definitely work on those sounds. Two type of uh, red color or orange color that give the strong emotion and roughness texture that evoke a strong meaning. Then the painting with a cooler color and a smoother texture. Yeah, but then the painting with the, there's no subject and verb in there. So again, you're losing control over the grammar in your response. Okay, so I think my scores are actually pretty accurate here. So if I'm guessing right now, you, you had a 19, I, I'd give you maybe right around 19 points on speaking task one maybe 15 points in speaking task two, 11 points in speaking task three, maybe 13 points on speaking task number four. So my estimate here, let me take a look out of here. Let me get my calculator out here. I can figure it out. And the next step is I'm going to show you my online course and we can figure out different kinds of lessons that you can do that can help you improve your speaking. I know we're starting private lessons tomorrow, right? This puts you right around 14 and a half points, maybe 15. So if, if based on your performance here, I know your goal is to get um, 80. I would put this right around maybe 14 to 15 points out of 30. That's probably all you're gonna get on the on this on your speaking section right now. So what we need to do, I, I think, uh, is to familiarize you more, I think, with the independent and the integrated speaking tasks. And I'm going to show you some ways of how you can structure your ideas based on the requirements of those tasks. And as we're practicing reading some model samples, uh, I can also help you with your pronunciation. So you're having quite a few problems also with that. The grammar is going to be difficult because grammar, even grammar and pronunciation takes time. But I think in the next week, the next two weeks, if we're working together maybe three or four times each week, I can probably help you improve your score. I, I, I think I can do that. Now, we're working together, and I'm giving you the TOEFL private lessons. 
but also I'm going to assign you some homework assignment of things I want you to do over the next two weeks to prepare for your TOEFL exam. Okay, so vocabulary, you can definitely improve that, but I think it's two weeks is not enough. But uh, I think in the long term, make it a goal to learn vo the vocabulary in lesson number four, the vocabulary in lesson number five, and vocabulary in lesson number six. That's going to give you 1,500 college level words. That's going to be very, very important for you. Uh, pronunciation, yeah. If I were you, start immediately on this. I will help you uh, with pronunciation as we meet face to face, but uh, I recommend that you do my diagnostic uh, pretest for vowel and consonant sounds. I recommend specific lessons here that you can focus on to help you improve your intelligibility. And this is more long term. I don't think you can do all this in two weeks. And then once you've mastered the vowel and the consonant sounds, you want to take the next pretest. And again, based on that pretest, I will tell you specific lessons that you can study here. And I think that's going to be also very, very important for you. Uh, grammar, the problem is you're missing your subjects and your verbs and you're not creating or you're not using accurate grammar to re-explain reading and listening passages. So we need to start from the basics and that means start with the, the diagnostic grammar pretest. And that pretest will tell you which of these lessons you need to study. So those are my, my comments there. And these are things that you should be working on, right? Even if you don't meet with me, uh, you can definitely improve there. Okay, let's go to the, <coughs> excuse me. Let's go to the speaking section now. I'm gonna show you a couple of things you can work on here. Okay, with the speaking, Let me see if I can find it here. So I think master lesson number one, independent speaking strategies. This you have to really, really, really study. This is the main thing I'm going to recommend for you right, right there. Okay, let's keep going. I'm not going to fo focus on any of these other lessons, but that one master lesson is going to be important for you. Uh, master lesson here is TOEFL integrated. Not writing, but speaking strategies. I think it is. Let me look at it and see which one this is. I might have mislabeled this one. No, it's yet. Yeah, it's, it's integrated speaking strategies. So I had mislabeled that. So you want to study this particular lesson. It's right before lesson number three. And there's one more I want you to take a look at here. Master lesson number six, how to make your speaking coherent. I think that's very, very important for you. All right, so this is my assessment. Uh, I think, I mean, basically you're at about 15 points out of 30. Uh, on the speaking section, our goal in the next two weeks is to try to improve this, I think, to 20 points. I think it's possible. I, I think it's possible we can do this. So uh, when we meet tomorrow, maybe we can do some more work in this area. But thank you for sending me the speaking task one, two, three, and four. I hope that you find that my feedback kind of lets you know where you are right now with your speaking. Okay, and thank you.